Do you love me more because I'm making you chocolate cake? Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way inside. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Sundays at Tiffany's. I missed you on Tuesday but I just needed a day off. The last video I made last Sunday was a extreme like cook with me. I was cooking all day long all the amazing fall recipes so feel free to check out that video but in today's video we're keeping it super simple and incredibly easy i am now 32 weeks pregnant and i just need all of the grace and i need easy right now so i wanted to try out some new dump and go crock pot meals i feel like this is also a great idea for anyone who's busy of course but also being postpartum you know, just order Instacart, a couple of things to throw in the crock pot. You don't have to worry about freezer meals and things like that. So I just really wanted to try out some new recipes and keep some that I really enjoy. So for today's video, we're doing a honey balsamic pot roast. And I just feel like it's going to be delicious. I went ahead and got all my ingredients ready. It is 10 a.m. We're gonna slow roast this or slow cook this all day long and it's gonna be delicious. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna show you the ingredients that we need. So for this recipe, you're gonna need a two and a half to a four pound chuck roast, a half cup of honey, one third cup of balsamic vinegar, two beef bouillon cubes, one tablespoon of soy sauce, four garlic cloves, one third cup of water, and a half teaspoon of salt. Literally just throw it all in and cook for eight to 10 hours on low. This is what I got, I got this chuck roast. The first store I went to had no chuck roast. This one is seasoned with like natural, um, like the normal um, chuck roast seasonings, like salt and pepper and things like that. I would have gotten it not seasoned if they had it. I'm using two of these beef bouillon cubes. This is the honey that I'm using, the soy sauce, and balsamic vinegar. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that all in. And then also I'm gonna be using five cloves of garlic. So let's go ahead and throw that all in. All right, so we have our chuck roast in. So now I'm gonna do a half cup of honey and just wanted to show you this little trick right here is to just spray your um, measuring cup so that the honey doesn't just stick completely to this. So this is just a raw unfiltered honey. It's whatever kind of honey you want. That would take way too long. I'm not sitting there and doing that. So we're just gonna go ahead and open that bad boy up and pour it in like this. Again, a half cup of honey. Spread that all over. Now we're doing one third cup of balsamic vinegar. Next, we're doing one tablespoon of soy sauce. People fight me on this all the time, but La Choy is gluten-free and it always has been. It even says it on here. Everyone's like, you know, soy sauce isn't gluten-free, but La Choy is gluten-free. And just in case you're new here, all of my recipes are gluten-free because my family is gluten-free. Um, I was, I started off being gluten-free um, almost 10 years ago when I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's um, hypothyroidism and then my husband tried it um, the doctors always say the best way to know if you're if you need to be on a gluten-free diet or not is to take it out for a month and then reintroduce it Chris took it out for a month tried to reintroduce it and felt horrible so he stayed gluten-free 
um, and the kids are just gluten-free because their last allergy test said that they were gluten sensitive. None of us have celiacs, um, just a gluten intolerance, so we just avoid it. And it's been actually really incredibly easy for us. Anyway, one tablespoon of soy sauce. So next we're doing two beef bouillon cubes. Just gonna throw that in there. Um, if you are gluten free, you wanna make sure that your bouillon cubes say that. A lot of times there's um, flour in them. Same with like if you're buying like chicken broth. Two of these. You guys know a lot of my recipes, um, majority of my recipes include chicken because, you know, that's just like what my family eats the most of, chicken or ground turkey. But at this point in the third trimester, I've been craving beef and I also eat um, like crushed ice like crazy, so it must be like an iron thing. So I'm happy that I'm craving beef. Go throw those in. Also adding in our one third cup of water. And last but not least, I have to cut up my garlic. Um, you guys know in my la one of my previous videos, I broke my garlic press, but you reminded me to get a garlic press and a zester, and they're both actually gonna be here from Amazon today. So I'm excited for that. I know that they make a garlic you know, in jars, but it just doesn't taste the same to me. I don't know, maybe that's just me. So anyway, Giada taught me how to crush them like that to be able to easily peel them. So that's why I kind of smash it down like that. The recipe did say you can like leave the cloves whole. I'm just gonna leave them big like this and then we can pick them out um, if we want, but it'll still give the beef an amazing flavor. And go ahead and pour those in. Last but not least, I'm adding in some salt, keeping in mind that I know that the chuck roast that I found had some seasonings already, that the recipe calls for salt, that there's soy sauce in it, but some of the reviews that I read, I always read reviews before I make something, um, said that it needed a little bit more salt, so. Okay, I'm putting this on low for eight hours. Don't mind my dogs playing in the background. And then also, you guys, we are trying a dump and go dessert. Yes, please. But this only takes two hours, so we're not doing it yet. Okay, so now we're making some apple cake. Yeah. Our, what are we making? Making apple cake. Okay, we're making apple cake. Yeah. The first thing that we need to do is pouring in <laughs> the apple pie filling. Um, and this is 21 ounces. So a can of that. I'm gonna pour that in. It smells good. Ah. Ella, can you say apple? Apple. Yummy. Apple ah. cake. Okay, got our apples and spread it out on the bottom. Can I have that please? So now I'm gonna do a tablespoon of sugar and I'm just using coconut sugar. Yeah, can you sprinkle it like this though? We're gonna sprinkle it all over. Oh, perfect. Can I do the other side since you can't reach? Oh, you did so good, sister. And then it calls for a teaspoon of cinnamon. What's this? And I'm just gonna, you know, that's perfect. Perfect. We like cinnamon in this family, right, sister? Yeah. And coffee. And coffee. Yes, we do. <laughs> You're so right. And now we have uh, one box of gluten-free yeah. yeah. yellow cake mix. Use whatever yellow cake mix you like. Mm -hmm. This is 15 ounces. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to sprinkle that on top. Yeah, and let me just, I kind of want to do it even. You can pour the butter on, too. Okay. Wow. And make it a little bit even. Okay. Now what do we got to put on, Ella? 
Perfect. This is butter. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. We're gonna do it even, okay? This is a cup of butter. Yep. yep. So we're gonna put this on. You can do low for two and a half hours, but I'm gonna do high for one hour. Hit it again. Perfect. And then, there we go. All done, we did it. Yeah. Good job. I wanted to actually revise that. I only did one stick of butter, not one cup, because when I read reviews, people said it was too buttery. So, it's also that witching hour in my house. Okay, so dinner was absolutely amazing. All I did was just roast up some asparagus and some green beans as our vegetable for the side. And then I went with some good old fashioned microwaveable Bob Evans mashed potatoes, which are like an amazing staple in our house, especially for like these dump and go meals. You're trying to do something quick and easy. They are perfect for that. Our apple dessert, luckily I had brownies left over from the night before that I made. Um, Everly and fall just make me want to bake all of the things so that is why I'm gonna be seeing a lot of desserts um, but the apple cake is just now ready it's not crunchy I didn't really know what to expect um, it's more like gooey which sounds amazing so there's like raw eggs in it or anything um, but I had to do it on high for like three and a half hours so I don't know if the woman that I got this recipe from just had like a super high speed crock pot or what, but it looks really yummy. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in a bowl for Chris and I. I just got the kids down after their bath. And of course I gotta to top it with some vanilla ice cream. So it's gonna be delicious, I'm sure. Let's see what it looks like. Hopefully I won't steam up the lens. Let me back up a little bit here. It looks yummy. Hey guys, so welcome back to day two of a dump and go crock pot meal. Last night's dessert, by the way, was amazing. It was so good, but today we are making a kind of dump and go General Tso's chicken. So for this recipe, you're gonna need four chicken breasts. I only did three. Um, one fourth cup of cornstarch, because you're basically gonna put the cornstarch in the chicken and then fry it up in some vegetable oil. A half cup of poison sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce, a half cup of brown sugar, three garlic cloves, three tablespoons of rice wine vinegar, one fourth teaspoon of dry ginger, and a half teaspoon of crushed red pepper. So I have all of my ingredients out here. Cornstarch, brown sugar. This is a homemade hoisin sauce because all the other ho hoisin sauce has sesame and gluten. So I had to make that homemade. I'll leave that recipe in the description box. But yeah, let's go fry up that chicken. Excited to try my new garlic press. All right, this is done. It smells absolutely amazing. We're having it with quinoa, rice, and some broccoli. Hey everyone, and welcome back to day three. We are actually doing two crock pot meals. It's a little loud in my house because I have a lot of kids. Um, 
So we are making a chicken noodle soup. Tanner's a little bit under the weather, so we're just kind of managing that. And whenever, he doesn't sound like he's sick, right? Whenever anybody in our family is sick, we love to make chicken noodle soup. It's just soothing and comforting, and we love that. It's so incredibly easy and fast. And then I'm also making chicken fajitas. So Chris and I will be having chicken fajitas for dinner. The kids will be having chicken noodle soup, and then hopefully we'll have some leftovers for chicken noodle soup for lunch tomorrow. So the first thing I did was just get all of my produce prepared for both dishes, and I'll insert that right here. Okay, so for the fajitas, I just have two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast in my crock pot. And then over here, I have everything cut up. I have a yellow onion, four cloves of garlic, as well as two peppers. Um, you can do whatever color pepper you want. And then as far as my spices go, as far as my spices go right here, I have two teaspoons of chili, te two teaspoons of cumin, a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of salt, and then some pepper and then this right here I should probably mention to you guys I am not impressed by my garlic press at all so I still need to find another new garlic press um, so if you have any recommendations leave them down below but um, over here is the juice of two limes I also have a tablespoon of honey in there as well and don't forget to spray whatever you're using for honey with some cooking spray so it comes right on out when you need it to. So let's get this started right away. I'm gonna cook this on high because it's a little late. First I'm gonna pour all, mix this a little bit, pour all of my spices all over my chicken. 
Again, so I'll blend together and be just fine. So they need to be perfect. And then I'm also gonna be doing a 10 ounce can of diced tomatoes and green chilies. So pour that over everything. And now I'm just adding in our peppers, our garlic, and our onion. And then I'm gonna kind of just let that cook on high for a couple hours. And right before it's done is when I'm gonna add in our honey and lime juice. So now for our chicken noodle soup, I'm just gonna put in some shredded rotisserie chicken. This is a whole chicken. You can use a couple of cups. And again, I'll have everything, all the recipes linked in the description box below. Now I'm just adding in all of our veggies and our seasonings, which is just some thyme and three bay leaves. We'll take the bay leaves out at the end, of course. And then 64 ounces of chicken broth. Just pour everything in and then at the very end, um, like 45 minutes before it's done, is when we'll add our noodles to this. One box. Two boxes. Also at the end, I kind of see like how much liquid is left because we like a lot of broth in our soup. We like to put crackers in there and all that stuff, so I might add more broth at the end, we'll see. Cover that up. We're gonna do that high on two hours. All right, we got about 40 minutes left on our soup. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our pasta. Okay, then to our fajitas, I'm also just gonna go ahead and add this lime juice and this honey. All right, you guys, so don't mind all the stuff in the background. I'm in the middle of Tuesday's pantry organization video, but we're finally putting in our last crock pot meal of this video. However, I'm gonna do a dessert after this called Death by Chocolate. And I'm also praying that this dinner turns out well, you know, that's gonna be. Good job, honey, you're so good with your colors. Mom life. Um, so I'm also praying this dinner comes out good, you know that if I ever come out with a cookbook, it's gonna be called Pray It Tastes Good, because that's what I always say. Um, but basically, everyone loves Marry Me Chicken, right? We would all love it even more if you could do it in the crock pot. So I'm attempting to do it in the crock pot, mostly because Carter has been begging for it like all week. So I have to make it for the poor kid. So here goes nothing. I started out, I have three big chicken breasts in there. I think I'm gonna do this one on high because it's already three o'clock. So I'm running a little bit behind. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do this one on high for four hours. So we have our chicken breast in here already. I'm gonna put some salt and pepper. Usually I do fresh onion and garlic, but I actually ran out of onion and I don't feel like cutting garlic. So I'm gonna do some onion powder. I'll put it in my hand first because I don't trust this one. Again, do this to your taste. You can do um, one real onion, a couple real garlic cloves, but I'm just doing onion powder. And now I'm gonna do some garlic powder. This one actually has the proper lid on it, so again, just do it to your tasting. A lot of onion and garlic, salt and pepper. It's really gonna give this a lot of flavor. We're gonna do like about two and a half cups of chicken broth. We can always add more at the end because I'm sure I'm gonna have to thicken this sauce with some cornstarch because the sauce makes it. You want that sauce to go on either your mashed potatoes that you're serving it with or the rice. I'm gonna add in a little bit of white cooking wine. I swear this is what taste makes the original recipe, like my version of the original recipe even better is adding the white wine. I'm gonna do like, like a half cup to start. I love a wine flavor in my food. Again, this is cooking wine. 
promise you and your kids aren't gonna get drunk off of it. And then some sun-dried tomatoes. And right at the end, probably like 45 minutes before it's done, I'll add in some cream as well as um, some mozzarella cheese. I love sun-dried tomatoes, so I'm being generous with it. Again, do everything to your taste. You don't need to make it perfect because everybody has different tastes. We all like different things. Some might hate sun-dried tomatoes and just use a couple. You can be like me and use the entire jar. Also, this jar is a 6.7 ounce jar. It was actually all I could find at the store today, so do that. And that is literally it. We're gonna do this on high for four hours. What, baby? Let me see your colors. All right, so this is on for four hours and now we pray. So we are starting on our mm -hmm. Death by Chocolate Crock-Pot Cake. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's really good. So we're using gluten-free cake mix, which is a Betty Crocker. Carter wants to pour in the dry ingredients. I did line it with parchment paper. This is the only time I've ever done that in a crock pot, um, but that's what it said to do. Okay, but try to get it right on the... Just on the paper. Right, exactly. Yeah, you're gonna do the next ingredient, Sissy. I was gonna do um, the wet stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna, like spread it out evenly. Right. So it cooks evenly, right? Okay, now Ella's gonna pour in a box of chocolate pudding mix, and this is 3.9 ounces. Ready, Ella? Go for it. No, Tanner, you're gonna do the next one, okay, Bubba? The next ingredient. You can spread it out for me. Okay. Oh my gosh, Carter. Ella, you got Carter pretty good with that. This is real life cooking with children. Can you tan my man? Yeah. So we have one stick of butter. Try to like do it all over the cake. See? Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Good job, baby. Okay, and now we're gonna put in some milk. We're doing one and a half cups of milk. Mm -hmm. It's Carter's turn now. We're taking turns, right? You're gonna do the same thing, Carter J. You're gonna like go Hi, all me. over. What, sweetie? Hi, me turn. It's your turn? Mm -hmm. You're gonna do the Nutella, cause you're Ellen Nutella. Mm -hmm. Hey, my name's Ellen Nutella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Ella's gonna put in a cup of Nutella. I'm gonna go like this. Oh yeah, does that look good? I wanna you... smell it. Okay. Here, can mommy do the rest? That was so good. You did such a good job with that. <laughs> yeah, it looks like heaven, right? Yeah, we see. <laughs> oh. get in there so I can spread it around. Now it just says basically like pat it all down and make sure everything is wet. Yeah, sweetie? I love you. I love you. Do you love me more because I'm making you chocolate cake, Ella? Ella May? Do you, do you love me more because I'm making you chocolate cake? Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way inside. Just gotta hope it comes out good, sister. <laughs> All right, so it's been about four hours. I'm just adding in some heavy cream. Also adding in like a handful of mozzarella for now. I'm gonna add a little bit of cornstarch now to thicken up the sauce.
like a brownie. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hundred. Okay, it's an A plus. Now I'm gonna try the ice cream. Okay, guys, so both dinner and dessert were absolutely delicious. In my perfect world for the marry me chicken, I would have sauteed some garlic and onion and some butter and threw that in versus like garlic and onion powder. It would have just given it like a better, more deep flavor, but it was still very delicious. Um, and dessert was like so decadent. I could eat like, I think I had like three spoonfuls because it really is just like so filling and rich, but so delicious. I will definitely be making that dessert again. It's like my first time really making a dessert in the crock pot um, was that and that apple crisp, which the apple crisp was also amazing. I wound up eating that like three nights in a row with some vanilla ice cream on top. But anyway, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And if you make any of these recipes, be sure to tag me on Instagram at t.beeson so I can share it on to my story. I'm incredibly out of breath because of pregnancy, but I'm okay, I promise. But anyway, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you want more crock pot videos, and I will see you in the next one. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.